In this session, we will going to learn the second type of SAML flow that is service provider initiated SAML flow. So first of all, we will going to see what are the steps involved in that. The first step is that the user try to access the service provider. And as an example, we can say that our service provider is Salesforce. So the user try to access the Salesforce. The second step is the service provider initiates login by sending a SAML request to the identity provider, asking it to authenticate the user. The identity provider sends the user to a login page, and then the user enter their identity provider login credential, and the identity provider authenticate the user. So, once the authentication is done, the identity provider now knows who the user is. So it sends a cryptographically signed SAML response to the service provider. The SAML response contains a SAML assertion file that tells the service provider who the user is. Now the service provider validates the signature in the SAML response and identifies the user. Once that done, the user is logged in to the service provider and can access the protected resource, or we can say the service provider. In service provider initiated SAML flow, we have the same components like the first one is user. The second one is service provider, which is in our case Salesforce that the user want to access. The third component is identity provider which is in our case, we are taking as an example, Google, which responsibility is to authenticate the user. And the fourth one is trust, which is between an identity provider and a service provider. So the flow starts when a user want to access service provider, like we can say Salesforce. Once Salesforce receive this request, Salesforce send a SAML request to the identity provider. And once the identity provider receive a SAML request, it will going to first of all, authenticate the user by asking you, you can say Google username or password. So once that done, it will going to send a SAML response, but not directly to the service provider. So it will going to pass through your browser. So the user browser is responsible to send the SAML response back to the service provider. And once service provider receive the SAML response, it will going to authenticate this SAML response with the trust they have between the identity provider and service provider. So it will going to validate that it is coming from a validated source, we can say. And once that done, it allows the user to access the service provider. So this is how service provider initiated SAML flow works.